Hey everyone, I'm Lisa. And I'm Mike, and today we are talking about some exciting stuff. So Lisa, what gets you excited? Well, I really love exploring nature and finding new places to hike, and I really love finding new places to hang out with my friends. Exploring is a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. You should come next time. All right, let's do it. And at this point, we've heard that Jesus suffered for us, that he died for us, mm -hmm. and now we're gonna hear what happened after he went to heaven. So let's check it out. Today, our story is from the book of Luke. It's about Jesus' last day on earth, a levitating Messiah, and an incredible invitation. Wow, what a story this has been so far. Let's review. The story started with God creating everything, including humankind. But Adam and Eve sinned, which separated them from God. God still loved them, though, and wanted to restore their relationship. So he started a plan to rescue all of humanity from their sin. This plan involved promises, prophecies, plagues, food from heaven, lots of rules on a stone tablet, a promised land, miracles, and more. All of this prepared the way for Jesus, God's own son, to be born. Jesus is the main character of the whole story. He was God's plan for rescuing all of humanity and showing us how we should love God and love others. But then he was killed. You might think that this would be the end of the story, but this actually was the most important part. This was the moment where through Jesus' death, the barrier between us and God was removed. Three days later, he was raised from the dead. He then appeared to his disciples and spent the next 40 days hanging out with them and teaching them. He told them that the story would not end when he went back to heaven. God wants everyone who believes in him to be part of the story, including us today. He wants us to live with Jesus as Lord of our lives, teach others the same, and live it out together. And he promised that he would send the Holy Spirit to help us do that. And then one day, as Jesus was hanging out with his disciples, something strange happened. And that brings us to today's story from Luke 24, verses 49 to 53. Waiting is the worst, isn't it? So many good movies out there, part of a major series, and then you're, you're just enraptured for like two hours, and then it's over, and it's a year till you find out what happens next. Even if you've read the book, it's still a year till you see the film again. How frustrating to be taken from the height of like, it's finally here and you sit and it's good, but you know that when it's done, it's back to waiting. Hey everyone, Dr. Jamie Robertson here. And on this, our final time together for a while, I want to talk about this idea of waiting. I was talking about, you know, the movies that you really, really like and how exciting it is when the story is finally there and you're, you're looking at the big screen, but then the, the, the sadness that comes when, it, when it's over. And that directly ties into what we're gonna be talking about because when Jesus returned to heaven, the story didn't end. But keep in mind, and this is where we need to set the context, there are so many times when the disciples thought that the story was over. The crucifixion for sure was one of them. I mean, he's dead. The story's done, right? They're gonna hide out because they're afraid they're gonna die too, and then their own personal story will be over. Jesus appears. He shows up, resurrected body, starts teaching them, explaining to them how they're gonna take what he was doing and take it out even farther, do even greater things than he did. So Jesus' death was not the end of the story. Well, hold on a sec, Jamie. Didn't you just say in the last one that Jesus is the main character of the story and that only one seven billionth of this or some number you, you listed off there is about me? Yes, I did. Well, then it seems like this is a bit weird because you're talking about the central character being killed off and then showing back up and then sending other people about so that seems to mean that the story is now about me. Kind of. This is still God's story. Jesus remains a central part, but now your character is on the scene. The story doesn't end. And then we have what we call the ascension at the end of Luke chapter 24 that I'm gonna read for you right now. Beginning in verse 50, then Jesus led them, the disciples, his closest followers, to Bethany. And lifting his hands to heaven, he blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up to heaven. So they worshiped him and then returned to Jerusalem filled with great joy. And they spent all of their time in the temple praising God. 
So now Jesus departs. I mean, Luke says it, and this is right at the end of Luke's gospel. So the story ends here, right? No! Luke himself isn't finished, because he's gonna write the Acts of the Apostles, his sequel, as it were. But the whole point behind Jesus' departure is that now the story takes on all new chapters. And here's the cool part. We are living in those chapters right now. Jesus will talk about his helper, his paraclete, to use the Greek there, the spirit that's gonna come and reveal to us elements of the story that we hadn't seen or heard before and inspire us to, to write whole new chapters or to take off on whole new adventures in his spirit, in his name. But again, you might say, Jamie, didn't you just spend all that whole last time talking about how the universe doesn't revolve around me? Yes. And that remains true. That's the great tension that you have to live in, is that the story is God's story, and he's invited you to be a character in it. The story goes from this beautiful character piece to this epic saga. And you, my dear brothers and sisters, are an integral part of the epic saga that we now call Christianity. Jesus departs, and, and as he departs, he blesses the people, he blesses his followers, and he tells them to wait. Why? Well, a few reasons, I think. One, when you're trying to do something new uh, and you're not really sure what to do, it's great just to sort of sit and wait and see. And this wasn't just like twiddling your thumbs waiting. Uh, they were praying, they were talking, they were discussing, they were seeing the world with fresh eyes. So they wait. And eventually we have what we now call in Christian circles, Pentecost. The indwelling of the spirit that sends these people out. And the sadness I have as I wrap this up is how often Christianity has been made out to be this dour, boring, no, 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 finger wagging, rule touting thing. When the earliest days, it was adventure. It was life risking, it was dynamic. And exciting and there was miracles and there was death and there was danger and it was everything you would want in a story and God continues to say yes yes more 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 and I will give you more and where you make mistakes I will provide more and more grace adventure creativity love compassion go that is the life of faith that is when I get excited about Jesus because I lived a good chunk of my life without any faith and I thought that was fun and when I became a Christian I thought I was gonna have to trade in all the fun and you know what for a while I did I traded it all in I became dour and as I learned more and as I read more and as I experienced Jesus more I became less and less dour and more and more excited about the deeper adventures of life and what ties that all together what drives me on into whatever path I happen to be on is the simple desire just to keep telling the story of Jesus I am Dr. Jamie Robertson, one character in this epic saga. God bless you as you continue to adventure, be excited about, learn to understand, experience life, and live in the Jesus story. God bless you, take care, and amen. Wow, how cool is that? Right when you think it could be the end of the story with Jesus going up to heaven, he actually shows us it's the beginning of a new chapter. Yeah, you're right. And in our own lives, when something terrible happens, we can think it's the end of the world or that it will never get better. When we ask for Jesus' help, we can see that our story can actually turn out pretty well. Yeah, so let's watch a story now where things went terribly wrong, but look closely because they didn't stay that way. Check it out. I'm Mariah and I love snowboarding, being active and being outside any chance I can get. When I go down the hill, I feel excited and free, but also calm and like I can't hear anything else and I'm alone. So as a teenager, I was always outside with friends and being active. I played volleyball all the time which caused me to go to the doctors and have x-rays done, and they found that there was a tumor in my knee. So within a week of that first x-ray, I started chemotherapy. I missed grade 10. Um, I lost my hair. I was sick all the time. I felt like I missed out on a lot um, and was just stuck in the hospital all the time. The chemotherapy didn't work, so they um, told me that amputation was a possibility and most likely, um, but I pushed towards uh, saving my leg and asked them to find another alternative. Going into the surgery, I thought I was keeping my leg um, and was really hopeful and had a lot of faith for that. 
but the surgery was 21 hours long and after fixing everything, there was a blood clotting issue and they weren't able to save my leg, so they had to amputate. So my dad told me after the surgery and for about a minute, I had a little panic attack and felt, I guess, terrified and how was I going to be myself? Um, without a leg. Um, and then after that minute, God again just gave me a peace and a calm and I was okay. I felt hopeful again. Right after the surgery, I uh, wanted to get into physio right away. I wanted to get back to what I was doing um, and didn't want to be sitting around. I wanted to uh, get out of my bed and not let myself get sad. So I um, pushed for physio as soon as possible, even though it was hard and frustrating and exhausting and sad sometimes. I just pushed through it and tried to be walking as soon as possible. The doctor said that it usually takes about a year to get a prosthetic to even start walking on it but I was walking on a prosthetic in the parallel bars in two months and walking by myself in five months. I think my recovery was that soon because of my past athletic ability and um, God gave me strength and gave me that determination to get back to my normal life as soon as possible. Uh, my relationship with God was okay before, but through the whole year of chemotherapy and the surgery, it definitely deepened and being a little bit upset um, just made me turn to Him and um, being sad made me turn to Him and then being happy made me thank Him. So definitely just, just deepened throughout the whole year. Most of the time I don't feel different than other people because my family and my friends are amazing and sometimes they even forget that I have one leg, so that makes me forget. Um, but then other times someone will look at me differently and then I'll remember and get sad for a second just because things are a little bit harder and different, but most of the time it's, it's just like normal life. Despite going through something really tough, um, life is great and looking to Jesus is the answer. He has been through everything you've been through and um, knows how you're feeling and he's your best friend and if you look at him, he'll get you through it. Wow, I don't even really know what to say. I think Mariah is probably one of the bravest people I've ever seen. Yeah, seriously. I can't imagine going through what she did. And for a lot of people, that could be the end of things for them. But she turned to Jesus, and he's turned into a redeemed, inspiring, and beautiful story. And now she's back on the slopes. Yeah, and I'm glad Mariah didn't let her hardship be the end of her story. So let's break into our small groups now and see how that can look in our own lives.